Today, I'm gonna go over the routing inside FL Studios Mixer. I'm gonna talk about buses, sends, and aux tracks, what they are and how to use them in your own mixes to enhance your workflow and efficiency inside FL Studio. So let's hop right in and get to it. Okay, so here in FL Studios Mixer, you can see that we have a numerous amount of mixer tracks and you can route your audio to any of these mixer tracks here in the mixer. So for instance, let's go ahead and route my kick drum to mixer track number one. We'll route the snare drum to mixer track number two, route the hi-hat to mixer track number three, and the 808 to mixer track number four. Now in order to stay organized within the mixer, I'm going to go ahead and rename each of these mixer tracks accordingly. And this brings me to the first topic that I want to touch on, and that is aux tracks. So what is an aux track? An aux track is simply any mixer track that can take audio signal and process it with effects. So whether you have vocal recordings or drum samples, an aux track can take that audio and process it. So in theory, any of these mixer tracks inside FL Studio's mixer can be thought of as auxes. So for example, here on my kick drum, I can load an EQ plugin or I could load a compressor. I can really add any plugin or effect that I'd like. I can manipulate the volume, the panning, the width, all because this kick drum is running through an aux track. So just to recap, an aux track is any track that can take an audio signal, process it, and then output it. Now, if you take a look at the bottom of each of these mixer tracks, you'll see that they're all routed out to the master channel over here on the left side of the mixer. And this master channel is often referred to as the stereo bus. Now, why is that? It's because it's taking all of the audio from all of these mixer tracks here in FL Studios Mixer and it's outputting a stereo signal, a two channel signal. Think about having a left and right speaker or a pair of headphones. There's always a left and a right channel. So this master channel, the stereo bus, is the main audio output of the entire mixer. Now you can see here when I have the master channel selected and highlighted in green, there's no actual wire coming out the bottom of the master channel like the other mixer tracks inside the mixer have. Well, if you have the master channel selected and you come down here to the bottom right of the mixer, you'll see that output one and output two are selected as the main audio outputs. So these are my left and right speakers. When I hear music coming from FL Studio through my speakers or my headphones, what I'm hearing is all of these mixer tracks being routed to the master channel. And that's all taking place internally inside FL Studio. Then the master channel is taking this audio and sending it through outputs one and two to leave FL Studio and go to my speakers. So if I take a mixer track that's going to the master channel and I unroute it, I won't be able to hear that mixer track because it no longer has an output to my speakers. There's no way for it to leave FL Studio and get to my speakers through the master channel. Let's go ahead and play this drum loop and I'm going to unroute the hi-hats from the master channel. Okay, so you see how when I disconnected the hi-hats from the master channel, the hi-hats disappeared. Now, what if I take those hi-hats and instead of routing them to the master channel, I route them to another mixer track that has no audio going to it. So let's go ahead and utilize mixer track number seven right here. So what I'm gonna do is with the hi-hat track selected, I'm going to just come over here to mixer track number seven, and at the bottom, I'm going to click this arrow. And now you can see that my hi-hats are routed to mixer track number seven. So now when I press play again, we're gonna be able to hear the hi-hats because the hi-hats are routed to mixer track number seven, and if you click on mixer track number seven, it's routed to the master channel. So it has a path to the master channel. Okay, so instead of routing the hi-hats to the master channel, we now know that we can route them to any other mixer track whose output is routed to the master channel. The hi-hat audio is still being heard through the master, it's just taking a different route to get there. So let's go ahead and unroute all of my drums from the master channel and instead route them over here to mixer track number seven.
And now we've created what's commonly known as a bus. So what is a bus? So a bus is a way to route multiple tracks into one channel in order to process them simultaneously together. It's basically a common pathway for multiple tracks to take to arrive at an aux track for group processing. All of these drum sounds are joining together at mixer track number seven. A good analogy that I've heard is think of mixer track number seven as a school. Now, how do you get to school? You're gonna take the bus. So all of these tracks right here are going to take the same bus in order to arrive at this school called mixer track number seven. They're all individually being routed the same way to mixer track number seven. So utilizing buses is a good way to group things together. So it's very common to route all of your drums together and then call it a drum bus. So let's go ahead and rename mixer track number seven, the drum bus. So how is utilizing buses useful to us when we're mixing? Well, let's say that you wanted to add the same effect to multiple things at once, like compression or distortion to all of your drums. Well, it's not gonna be very efficient to load that same plugin on every single one of your drum tracks. First off, if you're trying to apply that same processing to each drum track, you're gonna have to copy the settings and apply it to each instance of that plugin loaded on every single drum track. And secondly, that's gonna be taxing on your computer as all of these plugins begin to add up over your project. So busing just gives you another level of control before your tracks arrive at the master channel. So right now we obviously only have a drum bus setup, but in an actual mix, you're going to have more things going on in the song. So it's very typical to have a vocal bus where all of your vocals are routed to. And then also an instrument bus where you have all of your melodic instruments like guitars, pianos, synthesizers routed to it. So when you're utilizing buses, your stereo bus or your master channel is only receiving audio signal from your buses, not the individual mixer tracks. And you can set up your buses any way that you'd like, and you can have as many as you'd like. Many people utilize sub buses that operate underneath their main buses. So for instance, instead of routing your hi-hats directly to your drum bus, you can instead set up a sub bus where you send your hi-hats, your cymbals, your crashes, any high-end percussion element, you could send it to that bus and process it there before it joins together with all of your other drums at the drum bus. It's all about how you want to bring all of your audio signals together and the level of control that you want in your mix. Now, the last thing that I want to touch on is what's known as a send track. Now, a send track is a place where you can send out a copy of your audio signal to for processing and you can control exactly how much of that signal you want to send. Now, the most common use for sends is when you want to set up things like reverbs and delays. So think about it. If I were to just load a reverb plugin directly on this snare track right here, it's going to turn the entire snare into a washed out reverb sound. So with this reverb plugin loaded directly on the snare, let's go ahead and take a listen to what that would sound like. Okay, so it's causing the snare to get washed out and we have no control over the distinction between the actual reverb of the snare and the snare itself. Now, I know what a lot of you will say is utilize the wet and the dry knob right here on the actual reverb plugin to blend in the amount of reverb that you want. Well, the problem with that is that you can't really add any plugins directly after the reverb plugin that would only affect the reverb. So for instance, if I wanted to add an EQ to isolate the reverb frequencies inside the mix, I can't really add that EQ plugin to only affect the reverb because it's gonna be affecting the entire snare. And that's because the snare and the reverb are now one audio signal with the reverb plugin loaded directly on the snare drum. And this would be the case with any plugin that I loaded directly after the reverb. There's no separation of sound between the snare and the reverb. So you have to find a way to get the reverb by itself. And that's where utilizing sends is gonna come into play when you're mixing. So let's go ahead and delete this reverb plugin off the snare track. Now, in order to set up a send, all you have to do is route a copy of the snare to another separate mixer track that is available. So what we're gonna do is utilize mixer track number 10 as our send. So let's go ahead and route our copy of the snare signal to mixer track number 10. So with the snare selected, we're gonna come over here to mixer track number 10 and click the arrow. Now on mixer track number 10, we're gonna go ahead and load the reverb plugin. Now on the reverb plugin, you just wanna make sure that you have the wet knob turned all the way up and the dry knob turned all the way down. This will ensure that the only thing happening on mixer track number 10 is the reverb 
reverb of the snare. We don't want any of the actual dry signal of the snare drum coming through mixer track number 10, only the reverb. And now we can control the level of the reverb with the volume fader of mixer track number 10. So just to recap, our snare drum is being sent out to the drum bus over here on mixer track number seven. And then a copy of the snare drum is being sent out over here to mixer track number 10. And on mixer track number 10 is where we have our reverb plugin with the wet knob turned up 100%. And now we have full control over the reverb signal of the snare by itself. So now over here on the reverbs channel, we can load any plugin that we'd like directly after the reverb plugin. And it's only going to affect the reverb of the snare and not the snare itself. So this is the beauty of utilizing synth tracks for your time-based effects like reverbs and delays. You can add things like distortion, tape saturation, saturation, stereo imaging plugins. Now I'm not saying that's the correct way to mix or that's something that you should do, but it just allows you to be creative and experimental um, within your mix. Now, something to note is that if you plan on sending multiple tracks to this reverb or really whatever effect you plan on using for this send track, then you would control the level of that reverb for each sound with the send control knob down here at the bottom of the mixer. So by default, this is set at 100%. Um, but you can actually click and control how much you want to send to the reverb. And you would do that for each of the individual tracks that you're sending to the reverb. You're gonna control the amount of signal for each track that you're sending to the reverb. And at that point, the volume fader for the reverb channel is now gonna control the overall level of all of these sounds joining together and running through the reverb. Something to point out terminology wise is we're sending a copy of our snare drum over here to mixer track number 10. Mixer track number 10 is processing it and returning that audio signal down here represented by this green wire and returning it over here to the master channel. So wherever you decide to route the output of mixer track number 10 is referred to as your return. So instead of returning the reverb to the master channel, we could unroute it and then choose to return the signal to the drum bus. Now, another way to route your sends inside FL Studio is utilizing a plugin called Fruity Send. So let's go ahead and unroute our snare signal from the reverb. And instead, we're gonna right click that arrow that's on the reverb channel and we're gonna select sidechain to this track. So now you'll see that that it's sending a copy of the signal, but the sin knob is turned all the way down. Now here on the snare drum, let's go ahead and load the Fruity Sim plugin. Now here on the Fruity Sim plugin on this red box, if you right click it, you're gonna see the two options to select from the drum bus or insert number 10. The only things that are gonna show up when you right click this red box are the places that you have the actual snare drum routed to in the mixer. So I'm gonna select insert number 10. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna send out a copy of my snare signal directly from the Fruity Sin plugin. Now what this allows me to do is send out a copy of my snare signal uh, directly from this plugin. So wherever I have this plugin loaded in my plugin rack is where the copy of the signal is gonna be sent out from. So if you have other plugins loaded and you don't want those to affect the copy of your signal, you can load the Fruity Sin plugin before those plugins and the signal will not be affected by whatever you have loaded after the Fruity Sin plugin. And the same thing goes for the volume fader over here on the snare drums mixer track. This will not affect the actual volume of your copy being sent out to the reverb. So the Fruity Sim plugin just gives you a little bit more control over where you decide to send out your signal from. So let's go ahead and just press play and listen to what we've created with the reverb plugin. Okay, so as you heard, I just have more control over the actual volume of the reverb itself within the mix. And then as I said earlier, you can load any plugin you want on the reverb's mixer channel, and it's only going to affect the reverb itself. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the content. Please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video.